Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, it's your one and only homie, Big Yogi, WBOKRadio.com. It is May 21st, 2016. I am joined by my co-host, Miss Music, from Team Music down in Tampa, Florida. We are more than ecstatic to bring you the best in entertainment from all over the world. It's another edition of Encore Live here on WBOKRadio.com. A very highly anticipated interview. Very, very highly anticipated interview. Uh, for all that don't know what we're doing today, we're bringing you one of the greats in entertainment. A man that has been in the business, in the game, for longer than most of us have even been alive. And today we have the privilege, the honor, of interviewing Mr. Hawthorne James. How are you today, sir? I'm great. How about yourself, bro? I'm doing good, sir. I'm blessed. I'm hey, I'm I'm talking to you, so that's how I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for a lot of people that don't know who I'm, that's kind of, I don't know how that's going to happen for my, for my viewers. If y'all don't know who this man is, all right, y'all are talking, y'all are looking at it great, man. Like I, I have, I have so many questions for you, but just let us, let us know how you're doing, sir. Let us know what's going on with you. Say what's up to the people, sir. Can you hear me? Hello, hello. What's up, y'all? <laughs> out here trying to make a dollar. <laughs> you know how it is. A dollar, holla. Ah. We're making a dollar since the color purple, though. <laughs> right. That's a lot of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad they are purple. I think he's going in and out. Going in and out a little bit here. And so we're going to keep it rolling. Um, for all that don't know, the, 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 the gentleman that we have on the line, when I say that we bring out the best in entertainment from all around the world, we're, we're, today we're interviewing Mr. Hawthorne James. He's an American, he's an American born actor, born in Chicago, you know, much love to Chicago. Um, we're talking about a film in television history that starts back from the color purple Othello, the five heartbeats is where most folks know this man from, you know. I, we were having a little bit of technical difficulties, but I, I had to say it, man. I was like, the man already told y'all his office hours are from nine to five. Okay? But I'm not rushing that man. You know? <laughs> we're going to go into it. We have a lot of questions that uh, my listening group has been asking me to ask, like from questions from all the, the, the list of actors and actresses and people in the business that you've worked with. And I want to start by asking you, sir, like, where did you get your start in entertainment? Like, how did it all start for you? Well, the, the start. Well, that's that's, that's essentially because because actually I have a I have a bachelor's from Notre Dame in theater. I have a master's from University of Michigan in theater. I taught for two years at Illinois State University in the theater department, and then it was a choice as to whether I was going to go to New York or come to L.A. And I decided to go to L.A. And I knew nobody in L.A. I knew one person in L.A., this girl I had been dating in, uh, uh, when I was teaching. She moved to L.A., but I knew her, so I decided I'm just going to go to L.A. And then I started doing a lot of theater in L.A., and the guys who were producing and directing theater started doing films, and that's how I got really got my start, you know, it, through, through theater. Um, it, you know, one line here, yeah, the first film I ever did was called it was a Rudy Ray Moore film called Disco Godfather, mm. and that was my very first movie. And uh, then my first union movie was The Color Purple. Yes. So it's just the guys who were doing a lot of theater started just giving me a line here. I got one. I, I got my union eligibility through Penitentiary Two because uh, the guy who wrote it and produced it. Had been I've been working in theater with him, and so he gave me my first uh, union job. So that's that's, that's, a short, that's a short of it, but that's how I got started. Wow! So love brought him to his career eventually. <laughs> I'm for real, like he said. If he hadn't moved, you know, none of this would have happened. But because he was dating that girl, he moved and blew. God blessed you really well. Oh, I'm missing all of that. <laughs> I was saying that love happened to bring you to California, which happened to bring you to your new life and your new blessings. I think that was beautiful. I want to yeah. ask you, sir, like, that's, that's the way it was. 
So uh, I never thought of it that way. <laughs> Beautiful. It is though. I, I I think of things really complex. I'm I'm a Cancerian, you know, I get deep on you. <laughs> That's beautiful though. You are blessed though. I, oh, a thousandfold. I am. God bless you again. What what drew you to theater? Like like in your in, in your coming up, what, what drew you to theater? Like what what's what what like in your in your upbringing had you say I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go into performing arts. I'm gonna go into theater. Well, well see, that's that's one of those. It, it, I found in kindergarten actually. When I was in kindergarten, uh, there was a nun. I went to Catholic school all my life, and there was a nun who put on a, a kindergarten play every year, and it became very famous in Chicago. And eventually, they started uh, putting it on television. But I was on stage. It was something, and I remember this. I could, I remember very clearly. There was something magical that happened when I was on stage, and then throughout grade school, I did a play here and there. And then when I went to high school, see, high school was interesting for me because being a kid from Chicago, who from the, I'm, I'm a South, and you know, so one of those kids where we had beans and greens every night. And there was a priest named Father Barry Schneider who did a play every year when I was in high school. And it was either one of two things, a Hamlet, Raisin in the Sun, every year at all. And the year I became a sophomore, we couldn't, do, we couldn't be in the play as freshmen. He was doing Hamlet. So I didn't get to play Hamlet, although in my mind I should have been Hamlet. <laughs> was a senior that was planning. He don't want to do it. Something about stage that just resonated, and I get to be one of the guards. There was a guy next door, one store, and once a month, whatever it was, and then when we went downtown, that's the only white people. There was no interaction with white people. Well, Father Barry took this play on tour, and we went through Minnesota, we went through Wisconsin, we went through Illinois, and we stayed in white people's houses. And having just seen white people on the TV, it was like, now I'm in their house. They were eating steak and chicken every day, you know, and, and, the, and, the, and the kids had their own rooms, they had big houses, they had yards. And at 16 years of age, it was like, it was it, it opened my eyes. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. They got this. I think I want me some of this too. So theater really, in a sense, saved my life. And then when I got to college, it was like when I decided to, I had to declare a major. It was, I went through art, English, and music. And then I said, I, this ain't what I want. I know what I want. And I went into theater, and that's why I've been, I've stayed all my life. Now, I didn't know I could make a living at this. I thought maybe I was going to teach or something like that. But then, I, I, you know, after teaching for two years at the university, it was like the politics of teaching. I knew I didn't want to do that. So I said, well, let me go out and see what I can do. And that's when I went to L.A. And, you know, when I, went to, when I moved to L.A., you know, it's not like all of a sudden they want you on, on, on big screen. It's like I had to do. I had to put bread on the table. With all my degrees, I wound up, you know, driving cars, making reservations for cars, washing cars, working in mail rooms, just so I could do theater at night. And I would be doing two, three shows at a time. So it's not this easy like people think it is. It's still, you know, it maintains to this day, it is a struggle to make your living at it. So that's what it is. I hope you got all of that. Oh, we got it all. Because <laughs> I know I'm going in and out. Because your picture is going in and out. We, your voice is still consistent. Your voice is still consistent. Sometimes your 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 uh your picture, your video would freeze up, but we, I heard everything that you said. Your voice is still coming through very consistent, sir. Yes, sir. I heard you too. Um, can I can can I ask you this? When you first when you first got into LA and you first uh, made your transition from theater into film, as you said, you had people that you were working with in theater that had started to branch in the film. When, 
what did it feel like the first time walking onto like a major set? Like, for instance, like mm -hmm. I, I couldn't imagine what it would be like to walk on the set or to get the call saying you're going to be in the color purple with with Oprah and and Whoopi and and every that like that right there. Like when I was coming up, the color purple was a movie that played just as much as Roots to tell about heritage and like and a true depiction of different times that wasn't filtered by what school showed us and what television showed us it was a really an eye-opening movie that to this day stands Mo most i know most young african americans or most like african americans have watched the color purple and the movie roots multiple times in their life and it, it gives you a, a sense but what was that like for you like was that one of your was that one of the movies that you felt like, man, this this is really going big. This is crazy. Like, what, what was how did that feel walking on that set? No. no. It was, you have to remember, the only person that actually was known in The Color Purple was Danny Glover. Now, I, I, I did a show, I did a play last week that we just closed. Uh, and Danny was it's Danny's theater company, but he was the only person that people really knew. Nobody knew Oprah. Nobody knew me. These were very, as far as the house of money changed. So it wasn't anything that anybody thinks is be this great piece of art. Nobody knows what it's going to do. So I was just happy. I got to work six days. Well, no, it was five days. And then, 16 hour days, but I was making money for a change. And I was making good money. I've never made that much money in my life. You know, it's, it's not it's not it's not great money, but for, for me, it's like me making four hundred dollars a week to make you know double that was that was great money and getting to be on a set and you know working, working with this guy. So yeah, it was but it wasn't necessarily looking at Oprah and, and Whoopi because nobody knew who the heck they were at that time. Remember, they became household names after that movie. Yes. So it, it's a different. But any movie that I've ever done, I mean, from Speed to the Five Heartbeats, nobody oh. knows what that movie is going to do. All I know is I'm making money. I'm getting to do what, I, what I've been dreaming about. And it's, it's the same for me today that it was back then. Every time I walk on a set, Every time I walk out on the stage, it's still that thrill. It's still that excitement. You have to remember, and I, I, I keep telling myself, I'm still that kid from the South of Chicago who gets to do what he wants to do for a living and have a, a exciting time. I'm not working. I'm not, I've been making my living next door. It's a lot of hard work, but it's like the thrill is never gone. Man. I'm getting ready to do a film now. Uh, uh, get, uh, I'm, I'm in Vegas right now. Uh -oh. But we had the 25th anniversary of Five Heartbeats here in Vegas. Uh, they did the screening of it. Uh, Robert was here. Leon was here. Uh, was here. The week before that, they had, they had a special thing for the Tom Joyner Cruise. They invited me to go on the cruise because they were doing a special thing. On they showed the film. On, we had a cue afterwards. Where they did a five heartbeat. Man, I get I get to be on the ocean for eight days. <laughs> you talking about it's exciting, man? Somebody, I I took pictures. Somebody wants to take my picture because in my mind, I'm still that kid from the South Side of Chicago. Exactly. And I get that. You know, it's like. The, the, the summer before I moved to I, and I'm sitting in the theater in Minneapolis, and I'm watching these guys. I'm watching Glenn Turman, and I'm watching Lawrence Hilton Jacobs, and I'm thinking to myself, wow, man, do I, will I ever get to do something like that? Will I ever meet the last hell? Nowadays, I, I see, I see, we kick it all in Glenn Turman. You know, I see Glenn, and, 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 and we're friends. But it's still that mentality in my mind. It's like, wow, I actually get to know these people. I actually get to, I actually get to do what I have to do for a living. So that amazing. It's still there. Who wants to take it with me? Wow. People want to buy me it. Because I'm, you know, 
50% of the time I'm in a bar, I don't pay for a drink. I buy me a drink. And my drink costs $8. That person works for an hour, $7.50 an hour. They worked an hour to buy me a drink. You think I don't appreciate that? I just, I'm just flabbergasted. You know, it's, it, people are always nice. You know, if you're nice to people, they'll be nice to you. And I've never forgotten that. And I never forget where I come from. I'm that kid who didn't have anything growing up. And I'm just living up to San Diego's, man. <laughs> For two weeks, here and do nothing. That kind of making a lot of money, mind you. Not, that that's not that's not the thing. It's not about the money. It's about, because because I would rather be working these two weeks, but it didn't happen. I've got a, I've got this film. Like I said, I'm doing this film. I've got a film that that's going to be on uh, Lifetime that I did with Lou Diamond Phillips. That's going to start airing on Lifetime. I think it's June 4th. No, June twelfth. It's called uh, 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 oh God. It's called Night Stalker, the Night Stalker. So I've got that. I've had a film on BET. We've been running that at the uh, Latoya Lucky, and uh, and I finally got to kiss the girl. I get, I get to kiss Ella Joyce and be man. What? What, what? what more can you ask for? Oh, yes, yeah, it's from the Lucky Girls. That one just came out. That one just came out. Lucky Girls just came out. That just came out. Kiss the girl for a day. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like it's, it's, it's crazy because you're so humble, man. You're for who you yeah, are. Yeah, it was so it was out to these. Yeah, you're it, that that's crazy for how humble oh, you're. It's crazy it, to see. I don't like, know. The, the the the. For, for some people, like, to be I, able to I, speak to you is, like, know. crazy. It's like, you're, you really are. I can see it in your eyes, man. I can see that that I can see that you're still that, that kid from the south side of Chicago that's like, man, I get to do some pretty cool stuff with my life, man. That is really <laughs> awesome, sir. I've had the best education. I went to school in London. I studied at the London Shakespeare Academy. You know, through, through I got a scholarship. Ted Lange, Ted Lange was the bartender on Love Boat. So Teddy sent me to school in London. Man, it's it's just it's just cool, man. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I get to talk to y'all. Sure. You know, this is cool. Just sit, I get to talk to just talking to y'all. You have no idea, sir. I'm. I'm you can like, come to Florida. Let me know. You come hang out with me at my house. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, Miss Music's you know, house. That's what it, that's where the boat left from. It left from Miami. Mm, okay. I'm from Tampa. Oh, you're you Tampa? Out? Yes, sir. Been, I went. To, I went to Super Bowl. I used to go with Super Bowl with a lot of uh, with a lot of athletes out here. Uh, okay. A lot of guys used to play football. So I went to one Super Bowl in Tampa. Okay. Was that the 25th Silver Anniversary Super Bowl? <sighs> How long ago? Maybe 10 years. Maybe ten years. Um, would have been a little bit longer than that. I was in the um, twenty-fifth silver anniversary Super Bowl when Whitney Houston performed, and I was on the field holding a Raiders um, flag that we had up. I did the pre-game performance, and I danced on stage with the Temptations. So, oh. yeah. You know, yes. I don't, I, don't, I don't remember what year it was. We went to like I went to like four or five in a row. We never went to the game though. Because I used to go with the players. So we would watch the game in the, in the players' lounge. It's a lot more fun watching it with the players in the players' lounge than it is actually going into the stadium. Yeah. Well, we were on the field, so. Hey. It was before. It was longer ago than that because it must have been in the late 90s. I guess, yeah. Yeah, mine was in was late... Because I was on the back of the um, Globe. It's the uh, it's a tabloid. I was on back of the front page of the Globe, and that was ninety nineteen ninety. So yeah, it was around that time because I hit all across you know the U S with the uh, the article in the I Globe. Know, I know the one that I went to was past ninety one because the five heartbeats have been out and stuff a long time. So it must have been like ninety nine or some, somewhere in there. Yeah. 
But yeah, I, I, went, to, I went to Tampa. I did uh, no, I, I did a, one play in Tampa. But I've been to Orlando. I did several shows in Orlando. We were doing national tours of one of the gospel musicals. So I've been to Florida several times. Yes, nice. Come on, chill whenever you want to. Got extra room. Uh, Got an extra room. <laughs> hey. Uh, yeah, cool people. You can learn a lot from him. I can learn so much from Mr. Hawthorne James. Shoot. You know, <laughs> now it's just... Mr. James, what, what, when, when you when you walk down the street, when you walk down the street, sir, like when you just like just normal, just go to the grocery store, stop by a Seven Eleven or something, what what do, how do people most commonly recognize you? Like, is it like what films do people most like? Do people recognize you more from film or just like, hey, that's that that's 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 that dude? Like, how does that go for you when you like when you go out and about in public? It it uh, it depends. It's like the five heartbeats is the number one. Uh, black folks <laughs> really know, and and but now it's crossed over. Asian people, white people, Latinos, they all know the five heartbeats now because it it's it's been it's, it plays so much. But a lot of a lot of a lot of uh, white people know speed, of course. Mm -hmm. But it's like every day of my life when I step out my front door, people know who I am. So the and and I've tried to put glasses on, hats on, and stuff. It doesn't work for me. It just doesn't. Because I remember once I, I was I was up in Oakland doing a show, and it was me and the me and the producer were walking down the street, and it was a dark street. I had a hat on, and there were two brothers across the street, and then brothers said, started yelling, "Big Red, how in the world these people knew me?" I, I I had I had a cap on. It was dark on the street, and yet they knew me. But that's how that's how that's how you know people really watch this, stuff. Well, and and people pay attention to what you do. Uh, I, my, my girl and I were walking down uh, Fremont Street here in Vegas, uh, uh, downtown Vegas, and, and we were walking down the street, and all and there was a there were people groups of people standing around, and they were signing. They were doing sign language. And so, so apparently there was a convention of of, of, of deaf people and hard uh, and people, vocally challenged people, whatever. But we were walking down the street, and all of a sudden I heard people running behind me, and it, and it kind of freaked me out for a second. And she turned around, and I turned around and looked. It was two two guys, two brothers, who had come up. One could speak, the other one was signing, and they were talking about movies. And how much they really like the movies I'm in. These are deaf people. These are mute people, and they recognize me. I mean, it's like, oh my God, man, come on, come on. That's how, and, and they ran after me so that they could take pictures with me. Is that overwhelming? You know what? What is that is to me? Come on, man. My girl talks about that too. That's her favorite moment. Mm -hmm. Is is it overwhelming for you? Like, what, if it, I mean, I know that it has to be. I can I can tell from speaking to you that like you know you're like you said just a you know kid from the south side of Chicago that's just making a dollar you know. But is it does it ever get overwhelming for you when people come up to you? You know, everybody's not always in the mood. You know, you might you might be having a bad day and want to go for a walk and not want to speak to anybody. Does it ever does it ever get overwhelming for you? Wait a minute, I lost you again. I lost. Well, it, it depends on what you mean by overwhelming. I I don't think it's ever gotten, I don't think it's ever gotten no over in, in that sense overwhelming for me. It has even on my bad days, I never ever uh would want people to stop coming to me and, and, and talking to me. It. I've never had a day in which I said, ah, I don't want to be bothered with people. I've never had a day like that. Because as soon as you put that out into the universe, then God says, okay, we're going to stop this. So you have to be careful what you wish for, too. But, but people are so nice, and, 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 and especially black folks, have no clue what they have done for me. Because there were times I would go to the gas station, man, and, and, I, and I'd be sitting around 
trying to pull pennies out of my pocket, trying to figure out, man, I could, I, I could have put some gas in my car. And, and thinking to myself, man, you were accepted into law school. Why didn't you just go to law school, man? This is stupid. Why are you doing this? And some homeless person will walk up to me and say, yo, bro, I like that work you do. Keep it up. You represent. And then they'll walk away. They, they, that person has no more. I suck it up and say, okay, I can go on another day. That person had no idea at all what they did for me at that moment. And that's happened several times in my life. Well, people have come up when I've been when I've been on that low grade saying I, I, I can't deal with this. I'm tired of being broke. I'm tired of hustling for that next job. But someone will come up with invariably, God will put them and put them yeah. in my life and say, yeah. You you need to talk to him right now because he needs this. And then I can suck it up and like I say, go on another day. And that's how my life is been. Especially and I I great deal of gratitude to black folks because they're the ones who have kept me in this business, who have kept me going, who have told me, yeah, you know, bro, you are good. We like watching you. And and then and nowadays I get to put, you know, there's a film I directed called The Stick Up Kids. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm in it and I directed it and I had some input into the writing of it. And we talk about issues. Not only entertainment. See, that's what I want to do. I want to make movies that not only entertain but educate. I mean, little simple things. I'm not talking about beating you over the head with it, but little simple things like how many people know that California was named for a black woman, Calafia, in the Amazon? How many people know that Los Angeles was founded? The 28 something, something around 28 of 30 people who found. Angeles were black. The first governor of California was black. We owned all of Malibu, Santa Monica, Beverly Hills. That was all black on land at one time. Those are the things. San Diego. It's San Diego. Yeah. You know, Pancho Villa was black. The Mexican Revolutionary. You know, those are little things that you can that you can put into films, not only to entertain but to educate. I mean, it's like if you if you get the stick up kids, it, there's a, Manhattan comes from the word Manhattan, which is an African term. And and just in that film, we teach you that Africans were here long before Columbus was a twinkle in his great 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 great. great, great. And I hope I didn't lose y'all. Have I lost y'all? No, sir. You're still going good. Yep. Uh, we, we do. We do have uh, the video lost, though. We do have the video lost. Uh, um, unfortunately, your video is froze. Um, I don't know what's going on there. Um, maybe it just might be. I don't know. Is it the location you might be, or can you move around just a little bit? We may get video there. Oh, we may I, get a little I video in. I can see you back. Okay, we got sound perfectly fine. But the video, for some reason, is froze. But that's fine. That's okay. But but we do have frozen video on this side. It may just kick on in here in just a minute or two. But uh, we'll be we'll be fine. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll just kind of work with it and make and, and if it kicks in, you know, hopefully it does. But but it's it's just kind of froze right now though. Mm -hmm. Oh okay. okay. I don't know if I can move around on that yet. You know, because I'm 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 outside. Cause I, that's why I came outside because inside it the uh, the signal sometimes gets a little weak. But I see you right, drinking right. water, so <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, talking about, about film and television because, because film and television are so important. Because most of the people in the world get their idea of who we are from film and television. And if we keep producing movies that just show kids killing each other, that's who the Koreans think we are, as opposed to educating people because we're constantly being bombarded with who other people are through film and television and how great they are. Well, we got to start making our own stuff to tell people, tell the world how great we, we really are and, what, and the contributions to the history of the world in our eyes as opposed to somebody else's eyes. And the only way to do that is to become, uh, uh, start producing directing. And that's the only way we can get that message across. I can and we say, have to trust each other. You know, when 
when when I get to hire people, the first people I, that I call up, I can uh, are, are us. If you if you don't get the job, at least you got the interview. Because I believe in us. I know some hell of. I can say on on touching on what you were saying about and, and what you're speaking on now about um, having a having a consciousness to educate, not just entertain, but utilize the entertainment aspect to help educate. I think that's one of the reasons with a lot of the people that look towards entertainment as a way out, be it be music or be it be acting, modeling, or anything else. You know, it, you know, the entrepreneurship of people are start is starting to develop a bit more, and Myself as an MC and a lot of other people that are like in the music business, the movie The Five Heartbeats is very educational. I, I think that's why a lot. I think that's why it still gets so much play, still gets so much love because it shows. It, it's one of an. It, it's an older insight to what people don't think that they're stepping into in, in the music industry. It gives an honest depiction of what was going on, you know. And you're and like you're you're part of that. It was that. And, and, and your part in that is what a lot of people don't understand. When, once you sign that contract, you know, it's it's not, it's you know, they're going to be nice to you until you sign that contract. And then comes the business of the entertainment business and the music business. And the movie The Five Heartbeats has stood as a depiction of an insight. And even 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 in the era that it was made, then... Those the, the the bands, the five heartbeats, you know, the, the Commodores, all those guys back then, uh, the shy lights, those were the rappers of the era. You know, and, and that right. was a it was it was such a strong depiction. So people look at that movie and they say, Man, am, am I ready? Am I really ready to jump into entertainment? Because I might have to see Big Red. <laughs> oh, and you will. You will, definitely. It's worse today than it was. It's far worse because there's more money to be made. People are trying to figure out the industry. But yeah, I mean, it's. I love that movie because of, for several reasons. It, it, and me, take me out of the equation, not just because I was in it. And that has taken me to a whole different level. But that movie showed five black men who throughout their lives, their ups and downs, they with each other. But at the end of the day, at that last scene of the movie, I love that last scene of the movie. They're back together. They stand strong together. And their women stayed with them. The black people in that light. That's what that's what's exciting to me about that. We get to see us through our eyes, the truth. And I was on the phone two weeks ago with a friend of mine. And she said to me, she said, and, and I never thought about this, but she said, the character Big Red, she likes that character because back then he had his own company. He, had a, he didn't ask anybody for anything. He brought other people in. And that's why she liked him because he back then in that day at home. And I never thought about it that way. And it's true. The problem is, it's like the, the play I did that I was in when we just closed two weeks ago. It's called No Place to Be Somebody. It's it's uh, played by Charles Gordon, and it won the Pulitzer Prize in 1970. And I played a character who was just getting out of prison who had mentored this young kid. And he is a prison and he tries to change his kid's life. Well, one of the lines in that play was he was talking about his background. And, and the character says, We couldn't co copy Charlie's good points, so we copied his bad points. And that's what Big Red does. He's the, we could be the white people. We felt we had to copy the bad points in order to get ahead. So the play took me right back to Big Red in a sense, because those lines are essentially the same. And when this woman told 
told me she was an entrepreneur, but she liked it. I said, and he couldn't, he had, he's not the only one that was doing those back then. He's not the only one that was bootlegging records. Not, he was just copying what the white boys were doing. He, as we as black people have to be very careful because as soon as we do something, out of the, we get caught. We don't slap on the Thirty years. It's like it's like Suge Knight can't go and 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 make noise out. You can't do same things at this point in history. We're trying to change this. That's why people we can't we can't be stopped in our car and talk to the police. That's the difference. We have to be smart. We have to be smart. Because as soon as you make some money, I guarantee you, they're going to come after you. Because you're not supposed to have it. But we have to be smart. We have to be intelligent. We have to utilize it. This shit is going to change. It's going to change because there are too many smart people like you on the air. There are too many broadcasts like this. Information that can't be stopped. It will change. Not, not be in my lifetime, but this shit is already because I'm talking to people. I'm telling you all, I can make a decision. Write something, something that, that shows us who we are. Now, you have to make the dollar. It has to be entertaining, yes, but like I say, you have to stick up kids and you see what I'm talking about. The information that we slip in there. And if you come out the theater saying, Oh, that was a good movie. That I was entertained, and that's it. That's okay. I've got and and the woman and the man to come out the movie theater and say, "Let's go have a cup of coffee. Let's go have a drink and talk about this," because there was something in there that I put up here. That's what I like. Well, we go. That's what it's all about. We go, Mr. James. I appreciate that too, sir. We we really appreciate that. That that was. I didn't expect that, but I really appreciate that, sir, the compliment. Uh, we want to mess with your head a little bit. Miss Music got something. So Miss Music got something she's going to play. And we want to we want to see you. We want to see and get your reaction <laughs> when we play this for you, sir. Take it away, Miss Music. All right. Let's see if we can get this going. Okay. Hopefully you don't have a problem with this. <laughs> All right. You don't take no ice time to figure out that. Where you been, keeping that hot, slipping and sliding, dipping and bent, selling that crap. And that's a natural thing. Well, I'm gonna get just a guy. Don't you say that. I'm gonna teach you the crime, just don't take. I'm gonna get just a guy. Don't you say that. I'm gonna stay on your case until I put you away. I know you have faith that life's a whole of children. And you can absolutely do no wrong. A big brother, a word for you, the wise shall be sufficient. So I suggest you pay close attention to the words to this song. Woo! Woo! Oh. Oh.
that take you to, Mr. James? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> How I get job? It was just for whatever. A lot of this. It's like if I never auditioned with Fine Art. Robert came. I was doing some Shakespeare at a small theater. Robert had a friend in the play. I was doing uh, Macbeth, and that's a long story. Something I didn't even want to do. Robert came after after the show and said, "I'm getting ready to do this movie." You want to do it? And and I got to call my agent. Got to call me for I'm going to stuff. They want to hire you for I'm going to get you sucker. Because they had seen this, whatever it was. We knew each other and stuff. I, I didn't know. I actually didn't know Keenan at that time. I didn't know Robert, really. I just knew they were two guys who were making noise in Hollywood, who were using their career. Robert used his credit card to make, you know, uh, for that's how I knew them, but if they come up and ask me to be in that movie, it's like, wow, but Sucker was so much fun. You know, Robin Harris, I'm going to tell you Robin Harris was in, was played employee, right? Robin Harris, you know, do stand up on TV. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've been there two hours doing the filming that day. Did not know who Robin Harris was. Somebody said something about Robin Harris, and I looked over there and I said, "Oh my God, that's Robin Harris!" Because <laughs> you know, I'm trying to do my do, do my job, but I'm working with Robin Harris, man. I'm working with Baby's kids, and he's my employee. <laughs> man, you talking about? Only thing about, only thing about get you sucker, which has got me upset to this day. Was I had the uh, her name? Uh, oh, geez. Uh, played the girl in uh, as well as I know her. Uh, she got three names. And she was in. The, she had a smaller scene in the Five Heartbeats too. But she was in the heat of in the heat of the night. Uh, and Anne Marie. Anne Marie. I think it's Anne. But her scene. What a scene. Where 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 Keenan took this girl up to the from the bar he took her into the room and she started taking off everything. Her hair, her leg, <laughs> her booty. <laughs> See, I knew it a long time ago. So I'm walked by. And I said, and she walked by and I looked at her. When did Anne Marie get a booty? Anne Marie ain't never had no booty. So when I was went to the premiere of the movie and she started taking stuff off, I said, "Oh my God, that's!" A <laughs> I said, but what upset me the most is people were laughing at that scene, and my scene come, my big scene comes right after that. So. When we, when we started doing when they started doing stuff that I was started getting into my stuff, people were still laughing. That's that's an hysterical movie, man. That's it. I, I just wished to myself, I said, damn, why did it have to come up to the movie? But it was great. I mean, that was that was a wonderful day. And Anne Marie got a booty. Man, Anne Marie ain't never had no booty. <laughs> you wow. What is, what is, from 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 the time you first came in, from the fir, from the time you first started up in entertainment to to this date, 2016, like what what keeps what keeps Mr. Hawthorne James going, man? Like what what keeps you what keeps you driving forward to get past the difficulties and the obstacles to to, to stay going? Like what what is it for you, sir? It, it it is about education for me. It's about it's not about me anymore. It's, it's several things. It's about educating people about the history and 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 my my instrument. Some people are politicians. Some people are teachers. My instrument is through entertainment, and I want to be able to have some power to be able to teach through it through the through entertainment. And 
also it's about it's about helping other people. It's like I, I tell everybody I, I, I can't because my ancestors sacrificed way too much to get me where I am today. If if my ancestors had to sacrifice to have done what they did to make sure that I had food beans on the table, that I had my mother and father in the house. If I quit, they win. Of the side, and I'd be damned if my ancestors to win to beat me. So I tell everybody in a heartbeat, I keep turning up like a bad penny. You can't get rid of me. Amen. But that's the, that's the reason because I want I want to be able to give other people jobs. I want to be able to educate. If I have my I don't have to. I ain't gonna. I ain't, I ain't got a Bentley. But I, it may be a Honda, it may be a, but I have enough to be able to my, my small little lifestyle. It's about helping other people. I know so many people, man, that need and deserve to have that break. And I'm, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to help other people along with, with my love. People love what I do. And there's nothing rather that says, okay, that's enough for you. But that's what it's about for me now. It really is. It's, it's about this politics, man. It's, these these people in this country have lost their little minds. They have lost their freaking mind. Hmm. And, and say about these people. I guess, <laughs> they don't know any better. And I can't be a, 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 a problem. I have to be part of the solution. So that's what keeps me going. What would you What would you have to say, sir? I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure I know how this is going to come coming from you, but what would you have to say with the uh, with the rising epidemic of our youth, like you like you said in the message that came from. Um, like a few minutes ago, you said, you know, instead of accentuating the good, we chose to accentuate the bad. And what would you, what would be a message that you would have to the youth right now right. in Chicago, in D.C.? And like, I, I live in Maryland. I'm very close to D.C. And it, it, there, it's, 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 it's crazy again. It's crazy again. What, what's going on in Chicago? Like, I, I went to Highland Park High School. My, my, my father was in the Army. We were on Fort Sheridan out there in Chicago. So I spent a lot of time in North Chicago, South Side of Chicago, as a youth, like, running around. It was crazy then. But, like, the level that it's at now, it's like, for, for, for this is what's very instrumental in this interview with you. Because you are, you are, you are a very accomplished person that comes from an area that really didn't give too many outlets. So like what what would you what would you say to the to, to the youngins out here that are they're throwing their lives away like they feel like there's no hope they feel like what they're doing is the only thing to do it's because it hurts a lot to see these kids doing what they do but I totally understand why they're doing it. I mean, look at Chicago. Rahm Emanuel is closing schools. Are you going to be closing schools? That's insane. Your kids, when 16, 17, 14, 13 years old, have energy to burn. I mean, we had outlets for that energy, even if it was just going outside and running around. By the time night time do anything. Now these kids don't have a, can't go to school, can't be safe in school. It, it, it's, it's hard for me to say, look, look them in the eye and say, you know, you got to have hope. But that's what I got to say to you. You don't have a life. Look at me. Look at me. Touch me. I'm real. I came from these streets just like you. But there's a determination there. But at the same time, it's like I had, I had people who were in my corner. And if you don't have those people, it's hard to sort. I, I wish I could just grab everyone. I wish I could just grab every one of those kids and put them in my house. I can't do that. I can't do that. When I talk to you, see, I go to juvenile facilities. I go to prisons. I go to schools. I talk to kids. I talk to adults all the time. Just like 
and I say the same thing I say to them I'm saying to you. It's we have to learn how to work with each other. And I go back to the stick up kids. I'm going back to the stick up kids. I had a woman who who hit me and and she said a year ago, this was maybe last year I think when she hit me up on Facebook. But a year previous to that, she said to me on Facebook, I was in a bad woman shelter. And she was in Florida. I don't know if it's Tampa, but she was in Florida. But she was in a battered woman shelter, and the battered woman shelter had a caustic up kids. She watched it, and she watched it again and again. Do you know that woman, within a year, because of the generation that moved to her, she had bought a four in Florida, and she was looking to buy a place. That's what that movie can do. That's what movies can do for people. Two people. It's one of the greatest stories I've ever heard in my life because it feels actually the movie that turned somebody's life around. You talking my compliment, man. That was truly exciting. This woman turned her life around because she watched the movie that I that I created. Wow, that's and great. that's what I'm talking about. I can't I can't touch each and every kid. But I want to tell them, if you listen to me, you can do this. You don't have to do that. You don't have to. Because if you're smart enough to run drug movies, all it is is big. You know where supply and demand. You know where where your supplies coming from. You know all. You know how money, etc. You can run General Motors. What's the difference? There is no It's all. It's just a matter of somebody saying to you, look here, my partner. Uh-uh, that ain't the way. And trust me, boy. And all of a sudden, one day I woke up and said, I don't like the way this feels. And I was in college. But well, all this stuff my parents have been trying to put into my head came from back here to the forefront. And I woke up, and it did. It was like one morning I woke up and I walked out of a house that I had no business being in and said, I ain't going back to this. I don't like this. It was always, you're better than me. You're better than that. And that's what I want to tell everybody. That's what I want to tell all these kids. You're better than this. And through my art, through my to film, television, that's what I want. I want to put messages out there every day because they keep constantly hearing about every day that they turn on the TV. If they even know how to read, pick up a newspaper, they have be told how worthless you are. Well, we've got to counteract that message with a message of our own. So you keep doing what you do. You guys keep doing what you do. You keep those messages out there saying you're worthy, worthy, you're worthy because apparently somebody told you you were worthy. Because otherwise, you wouldn't be on this. You wouldn't have your own radio. You wouldn't have your own interview show. You feel good about yourself, don't you? That's right. Yep, that's true. That's right. All you that's what you Man, this is, this is, oh, man, I have to say, this is one of the most powerful uh, interviews that I've, I've been a part of, and... I hope everybody that's watching and listening, man. I hope you're like, I hope you're really paying attention. It's, it's I was throwing it off. <laughs> yeah, it's not just a shameless plug for myself or for for my co-host or for it, this is this is truly like one of the best interviews. Thank you, sir. It's so enlightening. Um, I, I want y'all to like just really leave your comments and if there's questions that you want to ask, Mr. James, I'm he I'm pretty sure towards the end of the program we're gonna we're gonna make sure he gets all of his. Uh, all the ways to be able to communicate with him and channels and all that, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and let Miss Miss Music ask you some questions. So I need to take a minute. I need to soak some of that up right there. <laughs> yeah, everything you say is true. Um, anything I've ever like endeavored in, I've had people tell me, "Oh, you can't do this. This is not worth it." I mean, I go down to my my even my father. I hate to say it, but you know, let's be real here. Um, I've had people in my family, you know, and people closest to me tell me. Why are you doing this? You know, you're not getting paid. You're not getting this. You're not getting that. And I'm like, yeah, I understand, but you know, 
when you put into it and you can create something that you need to create and other people catch on to it and other people like it, eventually you can go somewhere doing it, you know? And then you're going to get a paycheck. Or It's just like anything. It's like being a freelance photographer or, you know, I haven't gone to school for the degree, so I'm going to have to work a little bit before I try to slide in anywhere. But everybody goes through that, whether it's school, whether it's, you know, um, somebody on a football team that's out there and, and they're trying to get, you know, get on the team or they're trying to be better. Somebody's always going to be there saying you're not good enough, you're not worthy. And... I appreciate people like you who like to go and tell everybody, look, I'm, you are worthy. I, I'm the same way. I'm, I try to tell people all the time, you know, there's lessons in life and, you know, there's people that are worthy out there. You're just going to make sure you get them, but you need to hear that. I mean, at times I need to hear that. Right now at this point in my life, I got so much going on. It's just like I need to hear that. So I appreciate you and I appreciate what you're doing. And I'm just curious as to... Along the way, through all the experiences that you had, what was the one thing and the one lesson that you learned that you were taught by God along the way, besides what you've already learned, but one thing to this day that still sticks in your head that he taught you? A lot. Hold on. I got it. Plug this one in. So. Man, I can't believe we're talking with the OG on the video. Everybody's got one, you know, main moral. Like, <laughs> I like that. I like that. It, it really is what you, what you just got to was let nobody don't let other people dictate who you are. Exactly what you said. That's, that's one thing. That's, I, 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 that's, I, I said before. I keep turning up a bad penny because nobody can tell me no. Nobody can tell me what I can and can't do. And, and there's one. I don't want to get into that whole religious aspect. I live my life. If everybody just did that, what would this world, you know, and it's always, I've never lost, and like I say, I told you before, I was down, but yeah. still that hope was there. Until yeah. this day, I'm not even close to anything yeah. I want to do. I'm not even close to the stuff I want to do. There's so much stuff I still want to do. Exactly. And, and, and that's what I so never, never stop, baby. You, you, you're absolutely right. There, there are always going to be people who say, oh, why are you doing that? You can't do this. You can't do that. You go on about your business. Leave me the hell alone. You do what you do. But this is me. Don't tell me, mm -hmm. tell me what I can yeah, you, can't yeah. me down. you have nothing. You have nothing, so now you want me to be dragged down because you ain't got nothing? I get news for you, partner. Get to stepping. <laughs> you must be out your mind. Certified. Out their mind. Right? Certified. Y'all know y'all heard that right. <laughs> y'all heard that right. Huh. And as being um, involved in the entertainment and, you know, the industry of acting, who was the one most beneficial person that helped you along the way that inspired you along your path of your career? That's a good question. I have to say, I've not been able to do that. Oh, I got baby. Mr. Mitchell. Yes. I think uh -huh. it's I think it's sound. You need to go on mute. <laughs> I think it's sound took over over there, so Oh wait a minute, I did, I had it turned down. Hey. We Mr. James, still there, sir? Did come machine. Mr. James, can you still hear us? 
I'm here. All right, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Sorry I, about that. I, I get banned. <laughs> <laughs> This music, no. you have anything else you want to ask, Mr. Zane? He's my teacher. Like I say, one was Father Barry Snyder, the other was Sister Aquanet in the kindergarten. Yeah, I had two doctors, and Dr. Reginald Bay, and Neil Bird, and when I went in class. People that kept giving me, who kept giving me leads and play and saying, you think, you think you're really good. Something there. Something. You have something. And people, and then this other guy named Hal who went in LA. Uh, Hal was the first black male model on the Ebony, Ebony Showcase. And he, he was a, he, he, he produced uh, several films and he was. He got into Hollywood and held a uh, class with Hal. I hate class. I'll take some big class. I don't know if you know me the name. But I took, when I first moved to LA, I took a class that I took uh, all the way directed uh, Yaki Rouge. And I think I took them. Uh, uh, was the devil in the key dress? Uh, I know he I did. I remember that one. Like, he did a film with Michael like, Peach, but with. Uh, Names who would know them and I can say them. Harold still messes with one of them. Harold, uh, he's a producer, director in the house. Uh, he's a producer for uh, like two films, married with children. Uh, he used a class to teach uh, Bill Duke. I know you know who Bill Duke is. Uh, Sir, if you could speak closer to your microphone. My name lost. No, I can still hear you, but it, it, it you're you're a little you're a little low. Low low. There you go. There you go. We're good, sir. Is that better? Yes, sir. Okay. When I had class with a lot of people, um, and those were the most wonderful people in the world. Uh, besides my parents, but uh, teaching. I'm holding up this phone, man. As long as I feel I'm holding up. <laughs> Wherever you were before, go back over there because, yeah, you're getting better reception where you were before. Yeah, but um, you know, the phone is plugged in, though. That's the problem. Um, gotcha. Yeah, uh, we what? probably were worth better head down by now. You better watch who you're talking to like that. <laughs> 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 I, I can't wait till I get down. I can't wait till I get down the trample so I can meet you. <laughs> you fun. The last person I bought down here was um, uh, Wild Bill, and he's from California. Um, he'd be on Hollywood on the red carpet with all the biggest stars and a lot of the new up and coming um, music entertainment. And he came down here for like one night. And he's like, Miss Music, you gonna take me out, right? And we gonna have fun, right? I was like, Psh, I got you. So I took him out, one club. Man, I took him in this one club. Everybody treated him like he was the man. He had all the honeys. He had the drink. He had anything he wanted. They were buying him drinks. He was so happy. He went back to California. He was like, man, next time I come back, Miss Music, we doing that again, right? <laughs> I'm like, yes, sir. I gotcha. <laughs> Hey, we can do some poetry. We can do some wine tasting. Whatever you're good for, just let me know, baby. <laughs> uh, boy, I'm with all of it. Any of it. <laughs> I'd love to see you come to my region and maybe do like the Howard Theater and speak to some people, man. I'd, I'd love to see you at like the Fillmore. I'd, I'd love to see you like down this way in like D.C. or Maryland. You know, we like the. It's my very much now, I'm, I'm there in a heartbeat. Man. The, the the message the message that you're putting forward and like you said with your art it, it's very much needed it's very much needed it, it's 
what, what you've been saying and the knowledge you've been dropping tonight, we need that out here in this region. There's a lot of lost youngins. There's a lot of people that don't know their worth. They don't know their value, and they're just throwing their lives away. And when you're an up and coming artist, and you try to and you try to incorporate some of that, you try to talk to some people. You try to you know let people know about business and like yo know, direct your life a little bit better. It doesn't resonate as well, you know. And we we'd love to have you come out, man. I I don't I you know I know the powers that I don't know all the powers that be, but I I have. Some people that do some things and they can do stuff like that, and that that'd be awesome. I, I know I know you're I know you're a very busy man, but I mean, anytime in the future to like come and just speak to the people, man. It, it'd be great to have the people out here, not just my listening group, but the the broader listening group, actually hear your message and be able to interact with you, sir. It's been a it's been a privilege. It's really been an honor, man. Like you really enlightened me tonight. I I, I really like took in a lot of knowledge from you. I hope the people listening are are paying as much attention. You know. Um, this is this has been really one of my, I, I really really like you said, man. You know, somebody believed in me and they gave me something to do, and it, and it gave me a sense of worth and value, and it gave me something to strive to do with myself. And I think that a lot of people don't have that because they don't get the reinforcement that they need, not just from the people around them, but by community. And it's really great to hear that from someone that's been in the game so long and so potent, so potent. To hear that, you know, that that is actually what we should be doing. You know, sometimes you stand out by doing that. You know, because it's, it's especially in like the, the indie music and, the, you know, and branching into like national and everything else, it's, you know, people try to pull you down. You know, before they try to lift you up, they try to pull you down. And it's difficult to navigate that, but, but keeping, a, keeping a strong course in your message and who you are and keeping your beliefs and your core straight. It, it, it does. It, it, it just it, it felt really good to hear from someone that's been around for so long to say that that's that's part of what you believe in doing with yourself and the message that you want to spread to people is to help enlighten our people, to encourage encourage our friends when they're doing something like you know, even if we think it you know they might not it, you know you, you might not but still encourage them you know, uh, we we really want to thank you for coming on for taking the time. Um, we're, we're just, like I say, it's just little old me. Um, I'm just the one and only homie, Big Yogi. Uh, this is Miss Music and I, Mr. Mitchell. We are at WBOKradio.com. Uh, yep. We really want to thank you and everybody that tuned in for taking the time. Uh, this was a great interview, sir. I really appreciate your time. I really appreciate your insight into the business and into, into your insight about how you carry yourself in the game. I very much respect you. I salute your grind. Uh, we want to take the time now to give you the floor to be able to plug anything you want to plug, sir. Give your shout outs. <laughs> shout out to everybody. Shout out to Doris, the girl here in Vegas, and, 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 and the two little girls I helped to raise who I'm in debt because I sent them to college. Uh, you know, to, to, to them. Uh, Carl and Alana and Cheryl and James Burks, my best pal in LA. But just the people that, the people I, I'm around and I'm around. I around. love. And, and like I said, go get the Stick Up Kids. The Stick Up Kids, K I D S. Y'all heard that. Y'all heard what you said. Don't make them say it again. Don't make them say it again. But like uh, the new film with Lee Diamond Phillips called uh, uh, The Night Stalker will be out. The Lucky Girl, where I get to do my first kiss. And, and I've got some projects coming up. So just hit me up on Facebook. Say hello. What's up? But I always try and respond to people. It's not somebody else doing my pain. It's, it's actually me on my pain. But, you know, just, Keep, keep up with me. I'll tell you a quick story. I saw the play that I did. No place to be from. It was like five. They all they had just graduated from, from a place called Amda. I watched them back then. One, one black girl, one young black girl, and the rest of them were like four white kids. They were backstage helping each other. They were. When they had to make quick changes, when they had to come upstairs and make quick changes, they were helping each other, they were constantly supporting each other. 
Most kids are still on Facebook. They're starting, the group of them are starting their own production groups. If we as black people could understand how they work and how they get things done, to start from that, that's how things get done. And I'm willing to do that. I don't have to be the chief all the time. I have more knowledge than most people. But if you got a good plan, I'm here for you, partner. We have to work with each other the same way they work. And it's not just trying to stab each other back, grabbing a barrel and crap. That's not going to get us anywhere. And I can tell you stories when I say I was at one time I was one of the highest black people in the country. I was in a major film company. And I was the only one. No one was working my back. So we have to learn how to start working with each other. And start bringing love. Let's speak to God. Because it is all God. Come on. Love each other. And working, I don't even damn if I like you or not. We can make some money together. <laughs> Here's the long way. Let's do it. Well, that's what they do all day. And let's begin this. And I appreciate you all giving me the opportunity to say the I feel the modesty. So thank you all. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you, man. Blessings, continued blessings. We hope that you stay out here. We hope that, I hope that all the platforms open up to you. Everybody that's been listening, watch these shows coming out. Watch these shows that are going to be coming out. Night Stalker coming out June 12th on Lifetime. Um, as you heard, you know his office hours are from 9 to 5. <laughs> if he got to tell you again to go get stick up kids, you know what happened, okay? All mm -hmm. right. So, we want to give a big salute to the listening group. We want to give a big shout out to everybody that's tuned in, everybody that loves and supports what we do. We want to give a big shout out, big salute, respect, love. Man, Mr. Hawthorne James, ladies and gentlemen, WBOKradio.com. I would say we playing fair, but I guess not. I want to give a big shout out to the boss man, the man that pays the bills, Mr. HNIC Mitchell, for keeping us on, making sure the platform stays open. We appreciate y'all for tuning in. So out, shout out and salute to my to my, my co-host, Miss Music. Miss Music, tell them what it do. With Team Music, what you got coming up? Yeah, if y'all want to go ahead and submit your music, go ahead and send it in to tmusicradio at gmail.com. We'll be sure to give you free airplay also. We'll give you a free interview. Just go ahead and request it at the email. Thanks, Mr. Hawthorne. I appreciate you for coming on. I'm just so happy to talk to you. It was just it was a blessing. And I'm I'm blessed to hear words because at this point I needed to hear them. So thank you. And if I can get your address, maybe I can see you a copy of a new book we just sent out. My mom Absolutely just Yeah, she passed away and um there were supposed to be four, but we only got two. And it was just a sudden thing I'm um, having to do with yes. a lot of things. Yes. Yeah, but yes. I'd love to send it to you. Up on Facebook. Okay. okay. Well, thank you, and you have a great day. And we'll see you next time here at WBOK Radio. Oh. Everybody, send it in. Yep. And this has been great. Thank you. Go ahead, baby. You can take it away. All right, y'all. Y'all see what it is. Y'all see how we do. So, what we're going to do, what we want to do next week is. We want to have our listeners tune in because who we got coming for y'all next week, y'all y'all going to love this one. We're going to keep it rolling with the OGs for a minute. Like we said, you know, it's going to be music. We're going to play that music for y'all. You know what I'm saying? This is just our live show with your one and only homie Big Yogi every Saturday you can tune in to. But we also play music all day, all night, all week on WBOKRadio.com. We play your videos. Right now we're taking placement. I put my little video out talking about, like, if you wanted placement for your company, if you wanted to go ahead and see what it do with some advertisement or promotion for your brand. Uh, we got that rolling for you, too. But what we going to do this week coming up, boy, how many people remember the Shy Lights now? Um, that's what I'm talking about. Got a little quiet on the air. 
a lot of people don't know what I'm going to do. So we're going to have Marshall Thompson live next week, y'all. We're going to get into the head of an OG that's been in the game since probably before most of y'all was born, that's still entertaining the people, that's still spreading positive energy, still showing people how to take entrepreneurship and their mental, and they take their uh, mental uh, property, and they make something profitable for it. And they can spread a positive message to other people and guide other people on a path to do positive with themselves. So we're going to play your music, too, but we definitely going to have the OGs on to drop some knowledge on y'all. WBOKradio.com, ladies and gentlemen. Yogi one yo, the one and only homie. Shout out to Miss Music. Thank everybody for tuning in. Mr. Hawthorne James, we sure appreciate you, sir. Blessings to you and yours. We continue to wish you success. And I can't wait till you come out to my region or I can come out to where you're at to see something that you do live. I'd love to see you in theater. Uh, Mr. Mitchell, we sure salute you. We sure appreciate you. All right, y'all. Until next week, I'm signing off, man. I got stuff to do. I got music to make. Oh, baby. <laughs>